today. We have this opportunity to come to your house. We're so thankful, Lord. Okay. Count the blessings and joys of salvation in our homes and our families. This is Mother's Day, Lord. We recognize our mothers. We're so thankful for godly mothers. Pray for each one of them. Remember our mother there in the nursing home. Continue to give her comfort. Yes, Lord. Those today, Lord, it's lost and undone. We continue to pray for. We know it's not your will that any would perish, but all the country repentance. We're so thankful, Lord, that you look down upon us one day and we're lost and undone, not willing that we perish and come our way. We're so thankful for that joy of salvation. Remember those that couldn't be here today for purposes and reasons. Lord, watch our own many on the road traveling. Be with them, Lord, keep them safe. Pray for our service, Lord. We want you to come and invite you in our service and give us that anointing, anointing today. Pray for Brother Brad as he breaks the bread of life here today, Lord, that his word's in place and it changes not. We might receive what we need to hear from you today. We're so thankful, Lord, you told us in your precious word. You'd never leave us for seconds. You'd always make a way for us. Pray for our country and our leaders in the direction of our country today. Be with us in our service. We pray and ask and give thanks in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Pray again if I could hear. 
be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You could read throughout the Bible as many women of great faith, uh, actually of faith, but this is one uh, woman here that was told that uh, there's very few in the Bible. This one was told had great faith. And I want to share this morning some reasons. Or I want to talk about this woman, who she really was. And it just gives us a few little things here. We don't know a whole lot. But first of all, it, uh, what this woman was, she was born, I put she was born heathen. She was not born in the Israelites. She was not born a Jew. She was a Canaan. The Canaanites were actually the enemy. It was the enemy. They were the enemy of God. That's who they were. That's who this woman was. And I'm thinking about that. You know, the fact of the matter is, uh, uh, you know, we were all at one time the enemy of God. Oh, not me, Brother Brad. Yeah, you were. You say, oh, I was I've been in church my whole life. Just because you were in church your whole life don't mean that you weren't the enemy of God. That's right. Fact is, there was a time in our life, you know what you were? You were, a, in a sense, a heathen. Mm. That was a lost person. Oh, Brother Brad, I never was one of those. Yeah, you were. Amen. And uh, we need to realize that's a great truth. I believe many, many, you know, you don't wake up one morning and say, well, I'm saved today. That's not how it happens. And I've shared this so many times. You talk to people and much of the world says they're saved. But you know what? They've never been lost. You can't be saved until you've been lost. And this woman here, she was really, at one time, we see she was born, uh, she was a heathen. She was, she was lost. And she was, a, but you know what? Praise God, this woman, we, I don't know, we don't know anything about here, but apparently she... Uh, she became a believer. She comes, and you know what she says to Jesus? She says, Lord. Well, I'd like everyone to realize that's what he is. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I believe I love Jesus. You know what? Uh, you really love Jesus if you realize he's Lord. Yeah. He's the creator. He's the king of kings. He's uh, the Lord of lords. Yeah. And yeah, that's what he is. But this woman says, Lord. She called him Lord. I'm glad. Isn't it wonderful you can say the Lord's prayer and say, my Father? Isn't it wonderful to say that? Yeah. That's, that's a relationship, isn't it? And that's a one, that's, that's an intimacy, the Father. But I'm going to tell you what, when you come to the realization, He's Lord. You know what you're saying? You're calling the shots. You're going to help me get, you're going to guide me in this life. He deserves to be Lord in our lives. Amen. Now I don't know what took place. I don't know when. Now fact is, uh, this was a woman that 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 realized at one time she was a sinner. Fact is, she was from a Canaanite. They had other gods, and you know what? She found out her other gods fell short. Amen. They all fall short. Yeah. Now they might have some good morals. Oh, I tell you, I'm so tired of all the beliefs that are in our nation today. Mm. I mean, there's back to the old time religion, the old time thing. You know what? It was Jesus Christ. Yeah. But now we've got the Buddhist temples popping up everywhere, and I'm gonna tell you, oh yeah, they're good people, good people. But you know what? Goodness doesn't deal with your sin. Right. <laughs> Might even be the Muslims. They they've got some. They've all got some good morals about them. But your good morals isn't gonna save you. Right. And we find, praise God, this woman here, she was born a heathen. You and I, we all, we, one time in our life, I don't know when it takes place, praise God, spend an hour back there with my grandchildren. You'll find out they're not little saints, amen. You'll find it's, it's very fast in their life that they get a will of their own. And there's a time in a life of a child, I don't know, but you come to the age of accountability, We've all got that in us. Yeah. We find that she was a believer. She realized, praise God, a time in her life she was a sinner. She realized she was in trouble because of that sin. Aren't you glad for that day? Aren't you glad someone told you that you were in trouble? Yeah. 
Shame on us for not telling others. You know what? That you got sin, and that sin, you can't get any worse trouble other than that sin that you have. Why? Oh, maybe you've been in trouble other ways. You can't get any bigger trouble than this. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. That's separation from God. Yeah. But praise God, there must have been a time in her life, amen, she realized she was a sinner. She realized she was in trouble. But praise God, she realized there was a solution. I'm so glad someone told me about Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad someone explained to me about why he came. Mm. And you know what she did? She repented and she received him as Lord. Mm. Oh, aren't you glad for that day? Amen. Gotta be excited about that. Amen? Yeah. But she came, this precious woman here. She came, she was born. Yes, she was born. She didn't get everything against her, but praise God, she heard about Jesus. And praise God, uh, she became a believer. But now we find here, she, she had something else. She, we find that this woman here had a bad problem. I could go around and talk with you and you could share with me, oh, we've got some issues. We've got some trouble. We've got all, we've got this turmoil going on. We've got this sickness. We've got this heartache. We've got all this, this stuff. I didn't expect it, but it's going in on my life. This woman had the worst problem. You could really, when you ex ex fathom, she had a daughter that had a devil. You can't get worse than that. And say, Brother Brad, I don't know if I've heard about that. I've seen that on TV. I've seen that. You say, that don't happen today. You know what? This is something we don't realize. But I can tell you what, this morning, if you don't have Jesus in you, the devil has you. That's right. Say, so, well, they're good. You know, I'm tired of parents. And I tell you what, uh, praise God for a mother and grandmother that pointed you to Jesus and told you that you needed Jesus. Hmm. We find that... Uh, you know the greatest possession uh, you can have as a child? I don't, a lot of parents, parents don't realize that. You as a mother here this morning, your greatest possession, that was a child. Or you can't get anything greater possession than that. Mm. It's better than an F-250. Huh? <laughs> it's better than a brand new guitar. And you know the grandchildren, they're precious, aren't they? I got them two grandchildren back there, and boy, I tell you, they're precious. They're precious. And, uh, but you know what? The devil wants to claim them. Yeah. Doesn't he? I am tired of parents saying, well, my, my little Billy, he's, he's just a good boy. My little Sue, oh, they're good, they're fine. No, they're not. If they, if we got to point them to Jesus. Amen. And I tell you what, their only hope is Jesus. Yeah. You know what? The old devil sitting there, he's looking at our children, he's looking at them, and he said, to the Lord, hey, look at there, they, they come to the age, they are making their decision, and they haven't chose you yet. He likes that. He goes on another 10 years, now they're, now, now they're in their 20s, he said, you know what, they're still mine. And you know what he does, he, he gives another 10 years, another 20 years, they're 50 years old, he said, look at there, they're still mine. Oh, they might be going to church, they might be doing this, they might be a good person, but you know what, they don't realize it, but they are mine. They get in their 70s. And you know what, you get cold and you get kind of callous and he looks at them and he says, they're mine. I'll talk to them and they'll say, oh, I'm all right. No, you're not all right. Praise God, there was a day in your life that you realized you were a sinner yeah. and you called upon Jesus. Amen. And he delivered you from that bondage of sin, praise God. Like but we find she had a bad problem. You know what? Her daughter was lost. She had the devil. And you know, that's a serious matter. How, you can't get anything more serious. It didn't give us any symptoms. didn't get anything like that. We don't know. And I, I, I believe today it's so sad today. There's, there's, there's no uh, concern. There's no concern. Praise God for a mother, amen, that was concerned. Praise God for a, a father or a parent or a teacher or somebody that came into your life and had some concern about the condition of your soul. This woman had a problem. She was a believer, praise God, to her daughter. It worried her. 
And then, uh, this is what I, I like this is. In Mark chapter 7, the same text, it gives us a little bit of detail there. And the Bible tells us in uh, chapter 7 of Mark, verse 24, that uh, Jesus was trying to hide. But it says, but he could not be hid. You know what? It's hard to comprehend. I tell you, Jesus was in great demand. And he had this physical body here. He was in the flesh. And he was weary. And he was looking for a spot. He was trying to find a place to get a little peace, a little rest. But it said he could not. But I want you to notice what it said, why he could not. It said in verse 25, for a certain woman. I like this woman here. Said whose daughter had been unclean, heard of him. You know what this woman did? She broke in. I like that, amen. I tell you what, she was, she had a burden on her. She had a problem. She was concerned about her daughter. And she desired, she knew about the Lord. And her desire was that he might do something about that heavy burden. And praise God, she had that burden. And she said, I'm going to do it. I tell you what, Jesus, I don't know how she knew, but praise God, the Bible said he couldn't find any place to hide for there was a woman. Uh -huh. Praise God for a woman. Yeah. That had some unction about her. They said, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to knock on the door. I'm going to pound on the door. I know he's in there, amen. That's I'm going to kick the door in. I've got a serious matter here. It's the worst matter you could ever have. The devil has my child. Right. You know, by the way, the Bible tells us, you know what this woman, she did, she took some action. She didn't sit at home and say, well, uh, I hope it's up my child's going to be all right. You know what? She took some action. You know, the Bible is very clear that we're to seek the Lord. The Bible says to ask and you're receiving it said to seek and to knock. You know what she did? She did it all. She asked, she seeked, and she knocked on the door. And they said, oh, he's busy. I don't care. I need him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I like a woman like that, don't you? She had some courage. And she had this courage. Why? Because she had a problem. She had a big problem. And she didn't let any door, she didn't let anything hinder her because it was on the top of her list, on her mind, on her heart, her baby. I don't say how old this daughter was and could have been a teenager, could have been older, we don't know. But she was burdened over the condition of the soul of her child. Oh, it would be good if we had a a world today where family's number one concern was the condition of the souls of their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. Amen. You know what she did right off the bat? This was a woman that also broke in, but when she broke in, the Bible said she dropped on her knees. She bowed. You know, she had humility. She didn't come in there and say, Lord, you need to take care of this for me. She knew she was unworthy. Fact is, when you read the story there, you'll find the Lord, it really refers to her as a dog. And you know what she says? It's the truth, Lord. I'm nothing. I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve you to give me the time of day. But praise God, as I, as I, I thought about this, amen, she had a heavy burden. And you know what, this morning, this morning, we need to have some heavy burdens. Yeah. If I went around each one of you, I could say, well, what about your kids? What about your grandkids? Well, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a daughter, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, 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 a sister or a brother. You know what, this morning, we ought to have a burden over that. And that burden ought to be so heavy. You know, when she saw the Lord, it was so heavy, it brought her to her knees. Where, where are we? Do we have the same burden she does? We ought to. This precious woman had a burden. She knew it was a bad problem. It was a serious matter. It was a, a matter that, that involved eternity. The 
Bible says, are you heavy laden? He says, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Amen. Thank you. I'll take care of it. I don't know what your burden might be this morning, but you can come to the Lord. He can take the load off. Mm. I like this woman here. It's, we find this woman also was, she just didn't bow down. She just didn't break in. She had a bad problem. But she was a beggar. She was. She begged. Verse 22, she says, Oh, have mercy on me. But you know what? She didn't stop. You know what a beggar does? A beggar keeps on. I like blind bar maids, don't you? The Bible says he is alongside the road begging. And even though the other said, Be quiet. He don't have time for you. He was a beggar. You know what he did? He said, Jesus. They said, He don't hear you. Jesus! He don't hear you. Jesus! And all of a sudden, the Lord was right there. Yeah. Don't you think he was kind of glad he begged? Yeah. Don't you think he was kind of glad he kept on? He said, what do you want me to do for you? He says, can I see? Hallelujah. Amen. We find this woman here you know what she did? She begged. She kept on begging. You know what the Bible said? Jesus didn't say a word. That didn't stop her. The disciples said, Jesus, send her away. She doesn't deserve anything. <clears throat> you know what she did? She, her heart was so heavy for her daughter. She kept begging. You know, uh, it's kind of amazing. We take, we make light of this, of our souls. You know what? This morning, if you got a news, you got home this afternoon, and someone that you love dear, maybe it's a daughter, granddaughter, grandson, or whatever, and they said, you know what? The doctor said they got cancer. Stage four. You know what you'd all do? You'd drop to your knees. Wouldn't you? Boy, I tell you what, we'd be pleading. Do you know why there's something worse than cancer? It's sin. And we never give that sin to Jesus. You know why we do? We got to be a beggar. This precious woman was a beggar. Amen. I love her. She kept on begging, and you know what? I, there was silence and it didn't hinder. You know what then she did? She kicked it in. We find here in verse uh, uh, verse 25, it says, Then came she and worshipped him. She stepped it up. You know, worship is really it's praise. Boy, I, I, I'd like to visualize this. She says, she calls, have mercy on me, Lord. I mean, she, does, she, she worships him when she doesn't even hear him. It's been silence. I've been calling to him. I don't know if he hears me. But you know what she did in spite of that? She kept on worshiping. She, she came and she worshiped him. She praised him. She thanked him. When others were rejecting her and said, get out of here, you know what she did? She praised him. When her daughter still had the devil, you know what she did? She praised him. She worshipped him. You know, sometimes you don't get the job. You know what I want to encourage you to do? Just praise him. Maybe you got a sickness. Still got it. You know what I want to encourage you to do? Just praise him. Amen. When trouble and tragedy comes your way, I want you to know, I believe, which is the key to entering into the courts of my God is just to keep on praising Him. Hey, it's easy to praise Him when things are going good. Yeah. Say, boy, I got the job. Woo! Amen! Hallelujah! I'm counting the blessings. But when you didn't get what you expected, 
and praise Him. Can you imagine how the Lord feels? He says, look at there. You can go back to the book of Job. And Job there, you'll find there God's bragging on Job. You know the story. And the devil says, well, take some of the things out of his life. We'll see how he acts. And we know there he took his oxen, he took his sheep, and he, was, he had much wealth. And he took it all. And then he came down and a big wind came and took his whole family. Awful thing. Awful thing. But you know what Job did? This is odd. Only God can do that. It says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. Woo! That's what he did. And here's what he said. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. He said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. That's what this woman did. She was a beggar. She started to brag on God. In the midst of us, she's bragging on Him. She also says, Help me. Help me. Praise the Lord. Well, this woman, I already shared she was a believer. But you know what else she was? She was a big believer. You know, I can get along with you and I say, oh, I believe, I believe. But are you a big believer? There's only two people in the Bible that ever been called that they had great faith. This woman is one of them. When I think about this woman, praise God, she was a big believer. She had more faith than the disciples. It's hard to comprehend. You'd think the disciples would have a lot of faith. Recently I was studying, I was reading, and I, I, I read texts, and I've always been a little perplexed on this. Who remembers the story of the 5,000 that were fed? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that a wonderful story? Mm -hmm. I tell you what, who remembers how many uh, uh, loaves of bread there were? Mm -hmm. There were five. That's right. Mm -hmm. Five and a few fish, weren't there? Mm -hmm. Now who remembers how many leftovers were left over? Twelve, Twelve basketfuls. Amen. Boy, ain't that a miraculous thing, what God can do? But then I was reading, and you can find in the same chapter here, you'll find there's another story where there's 4,000. Now think about this. There was 4,000 instead of 5,000 people. Now, Jesus says, I want to feed him. Now you would think the disciples would say, Well, yeah, do it again, Lord. Do it again, I know you can. But look what it says here in verse 33. And the disciples said unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill the great multitude? Isn't that amazing? I always wondered why God gave us another story with, with fewer people. And I've come to the conclusion it was a test. And they failed the test. And by the way, you know how many, how many loaves they had here? Seven. And a few fish. Well, he had five loaves and fed 5,000. If we've got seven loaves, we'll just think what we can do. That's not what they said. They said, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? And you know what the results were? Now, that they were fed. But you know what? Instead of 12 basketfuls left, there was only seven. I came to the conclusion it's all because of their little faith. God wanted to do something just as good. But this precious woman here, you know what she said? She said, Lord, just give me a crumb. Woo, man, just give me a crumb. He, he said, I'll, I'll take whatever's left over, just any kind of crumb. But she believed that a crumb from God could do whatever needed to be done. Amen. Little is much if God is in it. Amen. She was satisfied. Just give me a crumb. She had the big belief, didn't she? Well, we know the story. You know what this woman was? Because of this great faith, because of what she did, she broke in. She, she bowed down. She was a beggar. She was blessed. He said, Jesus said, 
your daughter's been made whole. Yeah. Mark that down as you put it on the calendar. That's the day she won't forget. That's the day the devil left my daughter. That's the day she got right with God. That's an exciting day. She was lost, but now she's found. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I kind of thought this was interesting. You know, the Bible said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's what it says. You know what that word poor is? It's the exact same word as a beggar. It could be saying, Blessed are the beggars in the spirit. This woman was a beggar. As I thought about that here, there's another, there's another place you'll find the word crumb in the Bible. And you'll find it there in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Rich man had everything. You know what Lazarus did? It says he desired. It says he desired just the crumbs that came off his table. And in his life here, Lazarus, he counted on the crumbs. And you know what the crumbs did? They took care of him. But I've got good news for you. Crumb will take care of whatever you got, folks. But one day I'm going to sit at the master's table. Yeah. Hey. That old uh, Lazarus, the Bible says he died. I shared went uh, Thursday night nursing him about flying away. The angels came and took him. Uh, the rich man that had everything thought he was okay. He even was a good, charitable person. The Bible doesn't say he, they came to get him. It says he opened his eyes and torment. But I've got good news for you. Praise God, while we're here, there's a crumb. It'll get you through, folks. But one day, Jesus said we'll sit together at his table. Yeah. That ain't going to be crumbs, folks. I'm going to get the whole cake. I'm going to go be a big piece. I have not seen or entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for him. You know, this morning, as I think about this woman, this woman's precious. And you know, it would be good this morning. We, we ought to have a burden. She had a burden for someone lost. It was her daughter. You, you ought to have a burden this morning. The devil likes for you to make a light of it and say, it'll be right, just don't worry. And sometimes we get cold and callous, but I'm going to tell you what, it's, it's a serious matter. The trumpet's going to blow. Mm. I don't want anybody to be left. Uh, a lot of times I like that song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? I don't want it to be broken, folks. She didn't want it to be broken. But I have a God this morning. We seek him out. We might have to knock the door in. We might have to plead. We'll get to the point of begging. Get to the point of not just begging, but praising him, amen, through those hard times. He'll reach down and answer our prayers. Let's all stand this morning. Father, thank you. You know each and every one of us. And this morning, I'm confident we've got a, a burden that's heavy. Lord, help us. We want to know for sure. I meet a lot of folks who say, I'm saved. The light don't show. They're not concerned about others. And Lord, I, one of the evidence of being saved is that you've got a desire and a concern for others. That they might know Jesus. They might get rid of the devil. Get his grip off them. Lord, we know we can't do it. And Lord, we know that you can. And Lord, if it's just a crumb, we ask that that crumb would fall this morning. We need it. Lord, help us, Lord. Help us to take that burden that we do have and lay it at your feet. We know you can handle it. Give us that confidence. We need some faith, Lord. We need some great faith like this woman. Have your way, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. What's your need this morning? 
Say, I don't have a need. I don't believe you. There's a need. It's in your family. It's in Maybe it's in a neighbor. You ought to be a heavy burden. Times are running out. They're growing up. They're so busy in the world. They don't have time for God. don't have time for this. You want them to know about Jesus? You want to know about His saving power? You want to know about the peace that He can give? Oh, help us, Lord. Help us to come to You. Help us to drop to our knees. Put that pride aside and we'll beg. We'll beg, Lord. We'll pray. You're wonderful. We don't deserve anything. You're the Almighty. You're Lord. She said, help me, Lord. Help me. He helped her. Praise the Lord.